everybody. So like Denise says, my name's Nina. I'm a nurse. Um, I've been doing this for about eight years, labor and delivery for about six and a half years. Um, I currently live in Ventura. I grew up in San Fernando Valley and then kind of around Magic Mountain and Canyon Country. Um, I'll just kind of go through the line. So I didn't really decide that I wanted to be a nurse until about 29. Um, I had my kids early. I started having kids at 19 and 21. Um, I was a mediocre high school student, uh, not very good freshman <laughs> year at all, and then kind of clean up my act uh, junior and senior year. Went to community college, thought I wanted to be a teacher, found out I was pregnant, ended up dropping out to raise my daughter and be more focused on that. Um, and then later when they got older, decided that I wanted to go back to school. So um, because I was um, a mom and I worked full time. I did have to take out financial aid and loans to go to school because I just couldn't support everybody, um, you know, on my own. I didn't have a place to live with my parents or anything. So, um, it definitely was something that, uh, I don't know if I'm super happy about because I do have these loan payments that I have to pay. But, um, at the end of the day, uh, when I was choosing my career, I factored in, how much am I going to make and how much am I going to owe? And is this going to work out for me and my family? And so nursing is kind of cool because it's only an associate's degree, but you make pretty decent money for just having an associate's degree. So I was like, okay, I could do a two year program. You know, that would definitely work out for me. Now it wasn't only just a two year program. There's pre wax that you had to get into it. So it's kind of more like a four year program with all the things that I had to do in order just to get into the program. Um, do I think, I think it was worth it for me. It worked, I was able to support my family. Um, I am making decent money. My student loan payments aren't crazy high. Um, I did a lot of federal loans, so I'm able to pay them off slowly and they kind of work with me with what I'm making. Um, so let's see, so I was thinking about getting my master's degree because uh, currently right now I do bedside nursing. So that's, you know, it's really physical, use my back a lot. I'm with my patients a lot. And so for the future, I was thinking maybe I'll teach or, um, you know, do something different than just having an associate's degree. But then um, the place that I worked at currently, if you have a master's degree, they don't pay you extra for it. So, um, I was like, well, that's not cool because now I'm going to get into more debt and I'm not going to make any more money. This isn't where I want to go. So I got into travel nursing. So now I work different places around California and I have contracts. So I'm kind of like an independent contractor and I go from different hospitals and I'm, I'm making like twice as much as I did before. So my new plan for my career and my goal is to hopefully invest money, save money, and really um, set myself up for retirement so that I don't have to work when I'm 70 or 80. And there are nurses who work when they're 70 and 80, and it's a hard job. It's a very hard job. Um, it's not something that I physically want to do. And I would like to travel and just kind of enjoy my life in different ways. So that's my current goal. Um, the thing that I really like about nursing is that it's so flexible. Like I could be a teacher of nursing. I could, um, there's jobs where you travel and you just, uh, do in services. So you teach the nurses how to use different, um, medical devices and things. And that's what you get paid for. There's jobs where you're just an educator for your floor. So you're teaching those nurses, you know, how to do certain procedures because procedures are always changing. Things are always fresh and new in the medical field. So it's definitely a field that if you like to keep learning and you want to keep doing something different, that's the place to go because um, things are always changing, which can be stressful, but it can be very exciting. And I happen to really like it. So what I like about it is that in five years from now, I can revise my plan and it can change. And that's OK. It's very acceptable in the nursing um, profession to do all different kinds of nursing. You'll meet nurses who's, who've been here for five years and then they've done this for five years. There's medical missions that I want to do eventually and that's where you go to other countries or other places where they lack resources and you just provide them medical care that they can't get. 
So you some um, some places that I want to go would be like Guatemala. Um, you go into the villages, and I do um, maternal care. So I work with mothers and babies. So I would be giving these women care that maybe they haven't had in years, or even even their whole life, right? So um, that's something that I would definitely love to do that I'm just not able to do right now um, because I have four children. So I had two young and then I had two later. Um, my youngest is seven. So, you know, I have to kind of pick and choose. <laughs> I can't do everything, um, even though I'd want to. Uh, so let's see. My schedule, I work nights. I work seven at night to seven in the morning. The nice thing, though, is I only work three days a week. So I work three 12 hour shifts and then I can have four days off. I can have five days off and then go back to work. Bad side is that um, I work in the middle of the night and it's hard on your body. Um, but for me right now, it works for me um, and it works for my family. Uh, I think the next one, do you guys want to know like what I like physically do as a nurse or? Same, yes. Okay, so yep. I directly help women have babies. So that can be, um, you know, through the pushing stage, through getting medication to help with pain. Um, it can also be women who are sick. So let's say they're early on, they're like 25 weeks pregnant. It's not time to have the baby, but there's something going wrong. Their kidneys are sick or um, maybe the baby isn't doing so good. So we have to have them at the hospital and monitor them. And then I also... Um, do triage for women. So that means they could just have a complaint of, you know, my back hurts or I think my water broke, but I'm not sure. So they come to me and I check them out and let them know, okay, yes, it did break or no, it didn't break and um, assess their baby and make sure things are okay. So it's, it's kind of like a full factor of that. There's also, you know, with nursing, there's life and death as well. So it, there, um, fortunately for my job, it's very positive, um, you know, because I get to experience um, a baby being born and it's wonderful. But that's not always the case for everyone. You know, sometimes things do go wrong or things um, happen when the baby's inside and they don't make it. So it's another very challenging time in that person's life um, that I get to be there to try to help them through. Um, so it's like, it's a whole spectrum of stuff, you know, it can be really rewarding. It can be really sad and it can be really exciting, like all wrapped into one. And I think I went through everything or advice. I've also, talked about it fast. I think you also said med surge. Could you talk about that? Okay. So I did telemetry nursing. So it was cardiac nursing. So um, I would have four patients. I would take care of um, people who had open heart surgery three days post-op. Um, I would take care of people who got pacemakers, people who um, had ablations where they open up the veins so that they can get uh, more blood flow to their heart. Um, other people who uh, go into different rhythms like atrial fib or, you know, maybe they're taking a medication to get them back to sinus rhythm. Med surge is very, um, you learn really good time management. You have four to five patients, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot because they need to go to the bathroom. They need to get blood sugar checks. They need their medications. And usually they all need it around the same time. So you're kind of running around <laughs> trying to figure out who needs what. And then I worked in kind of a critical unit. So, you know, people, there'd be code blues and we'd have to do CPR and, you know, we'd have to go in and have these emergencies of people bleeding out while you're also trying to take care of your patients. So it, um, I definitely learned a lot from med surge. For me personally, I learned that I like connecting with my patients a little bit more and you just aren't able to do that in that kind of time frame. I mean, I loved talking with my patients and getting to know them, but as far as really giving them the care that I thought I would want them to have, it's, it's, it was hard. So um, that's what kind of turned me on to labor and delivery. But it definitely, it's a very valuable, I, I feel like for me, I wouldn't trade that experience because it made me a stronger nurse. Um, and also the time management skills are huge. Like you really need to be very good at, you know, keeping track of things that you need to do. And it helps you a lot. You guys have questions? Yeah. Hey, Mary, because you probably have to talk into my mic right here because she's having a hard yeah, time hearing me. Or just tell me. Uh, I want to know like the radius. 
uh, how far she can be from being traveling, like from her home. How far is she traveling? Yeah, like what's the radius of a travel leash? Like how far? Like. Oh, you can go. So they're asking, or he's asking, um, how far can you go to be a travel nurse? You can go out of the state. Yeah, you can go out of state. It depends where, what kind of license you have. So California nursing license lets you travel to a lot of states, but you can get something. I'm not sure the name of it, but it's almost like a universal license and you can go to any state you want. So depending where you want to go, you might just have to pay a fee to get another um, license. But um, yeah, you could travel all over the country, go to Alaska, Hawaii, Florida, um, pretty much anywhere you want. And the nice thing is there's always jobs. I have a recruiter who sends me a list of jobs um, kind of weekly, and it's a little exhausting because it's probably like 400 jobs every time he sends it to me. I mean, it's, it's insane. So you have a wide array of places you can choose. Um, yeah, like, I feel like I will always have a job, basically. Um, would you say that the rigor of a, the NCLEX for California is... Um, harder or more rigorous than any other state? I can't, I don't know because I can't compare. I will tell you personally that NCLEX is the hardest test I've ever taken in my life and I have never felt so sick after taking a test. <laughs> um, the good thing is that nursing school really prepares you and even though you think you're not ready, you are ready. It's just it's one of those tests that you just don't feel good about. And I don't know anyone who's been like, yeah, I did so great at that test. Like, it's just not like that. Um, the questions are very much like, you know, um, what's the best answer? So like, are apples a fruit? Are they red or are they green? And you're like, oh my God, they're all those things, right? <laughs> but you have to pick the best answer. So I, but from what I've heard, I think the California NCLEX is pretty intense. Because you stated that um, if you have a California NCLEX, you could go to different states, but is that the same? Other states can come here? So other states can come here, but only if they have like a contract with it. So it has to be, um, you know, like I think like California, Oregon, and Washington, you can travel there, no problem. Okay. And then I feel like New York too is with California, but it just depends. So... I think, I think honestly, Denise, a lot of it is for money too. They want yeah. the states to get money for the licensing. So yeah. that's another factor. You guys have other questions? Yeah. Wait, I can't hear you. When you go to nursing school, do you have to go to a specific thing or can you just go and then choose what type of nursing so the question is, when you go to nursing school, do you go for a specific type of nursing or do you go for everything and then just choose something in the end? Did I say that right? Okay, yeah. So in nursing school, you learn everything. You have to know everything about everything in a general speaking way. And then after nursing school is when you specialize, um, which can be hard sometimes because like labor and del delivery, for instance, um, a lot of places want you to have one to two years experience but you can't get experience until you get the job. So um, a lot of facilities will have um, training. So they will be specifically say for new grads or nurses without L&D experience, we're hiring to train you. And so if, if there is a specialty that you want, you wanna look for those programs and get into one of those you know, as soon as you can. Would you continue on to school um, before getting a job? So say I want to do labor and delivery. Is there like another certification that you can get going to school? Or is that something you get um, in training in the field? It would be in training in the field. I mean, if you wanted, like if you knew you wanted to be a labor delivery nurse, you can do, um, there's like secretary jobs at the hospital on a labor delivery uh, unit, or you can work like for a maternity home or, you know, even a doctor's office or something like that. Those would all be valuable um, to definitely just kind of see what it's like. Mm -hmm. I think the more you can see what it's like, the better. So probably what you're saying is through your rotations, you kind of get an idea of what you like. A little bit, yeah. Um, and every school is different. So my school, we had one day in labor delivery. And honestly, I hated it. <laughs> I never thought I would ever go there. Um, I had a good friend who got me into it. And I was like, okay, and now I love it. So I think that's the beauty of it is you, like, 
I think my biggest advice for you guys is you don't ever really have to know 100% what you want to do. But I think if you keep trying different things and seeing it, and if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't work, then move on and try something else. You know, you don't have to be stuck somewhere. It's not, it's not really like that anymore. You guys have other questions? Are you willing to share how much um, student debt you needed to take out in order to achieve your goal? So total, because I had gone to school um, when I was younger and then I went back to school. So my total debt right now is about 30,000, which for associate's degree sounds really high, but because it's nursing and it was really more like four years, it's actually not too bad considering some people come out with like 100,000 or more in a university. Um, it's uh, like I said, it's definitely not ideal if you can do it without doing that. Great. But, um, you know, with my income, it just works out. Is there a difference in having an associates for nursing and a bachelor's? And if so, how could you speak to that as far as the employment would go? So that depends on the facility. Some hospitals don't care. Some hospitals only want to hire um, nurses with bachelor's degrees. Um, the, a lot of hospitals in California are getting magnet status, which means that they need a certain amount of ratio. Um, there's a lot of things to it, but one part of it is there needs to be 80% bachelor nurses versus associate's degree nurses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're not going to get the job if you have the associate's degree. Um, I got my uh, degree at Santa Barbara City College, and they worked really close with Cottage Hospital, and they had a hiring program for associate's degree into that hospital. So I knew that I had a good chance and that I didn't necessarily need my bachelor's degree, but it's definitely something you want to look into for the area where you live. It would be worth it to get that bachelor's degree. Is there a differential in pay for bachelors versus associates that you've discovered? So that's the lovely thing too. It depends on the facility. If you work at some place like Cedar Sinai um, or UCLA, yes, you're going to get incentives for bachelor degree. You're going to get incentives for master's degree, for um, maybe extra specialty credentials you have for sure. If you work in a community hospital somewhere small, maybe like Big Bear or like I did in Ventura, it doesn't even matter which was another reason why I didn't do it because there was no pay incentive. So it really depends on the hospital and the facility. And with travel nurse, does it seem to make a difference or not necessarily? It does not make a difference at all. No, you get paid the same amount either way because, and, and right now in healthcare, I will say they're, they're a little desperate right now. You know, a lot of people have gotten out of healthcare because of COVID and they don't want to be bedside. Um, and the baby boomers are going to be retiring in probably like the next two to five years. I know. <laughs> On the tail end of the baby boomers. <laughs> oh, the baby boomers, which are a lot of people. There's so um, there's going to be a lot of openings um, in the health field. So that, you know, that may change it too, because not everybody can do a four year. And the associates, do, the associates programs are so good. They're designed to make you a qualified med surge nurse when you get out, which seems to be the need. So it may be, it may not matter, you know, you just have to kind of look at the times. Do you have any other questions? No, no questions. I think they're just shy. Okay. Well, he says that he says he thinks they're just shy. How often do you have a nurse in front of you that you can ask questions about? <laughs> what it, can you share anything with your experience as a travel nurse? Um, you're at Kaiser um, Fontana. Like, um, what would you guys want to know? Just like the difference or? Yeah, like what's your experience versus being in a, a hospital where you've been for quite a while? So the, the difference is being new. You don't have all your friends. Um, you know, nobody really likes to be the new kid on the block learning everything um, and being the only person there. There is, um, Kaiser is currently thinking about going on strike. So there's a little animosity there. And I think they are like happy to have help, but not happy that you're a traveler because they want that, um, that person to stay there. But for the most part, they've been very nice and very helpful. And um, there seems to be a general camaraderie among nurses that, yeah, we're hard on each other, but we also truly help each other because we want to take care of the patients. So 
it's it's kind of a nice thing. It's almost like you're in a club when you're a nurse. Like you, you get that respect. So that that doesn't seem to change um, for facilities. What is your next um, move as a travel nurse if you have one, if you know yet? I'll either stay at the current contract that I have because I like that facility or I want to uh, maybe try to go to Long Beach um, and check out that area. And how long can you stay at one facility as a travel nurse? You can stay at a facility for a year because anything over a year, you're considered uh, like a full time, like a contract or a regular employee, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Do they want to know anything medical about my job or anything more yes. gross and yes. uh, fun? Yes. <laughs> well, medical stuff. <laughs> um, so get used to blood. Get used to poop. Um, you are going to wipe so many butts in nursing because that's what we do. <laughs> Vomiting, everything. I mean, if you have a weak stomach, like you're going to have to work on that for sure. Um, so labor delivery, women vomit all the time. There's a lot of blood that comes out. We, and you know what else was weird for me as a nurse? I'll say, um, you know, we kind of grew up in a society where we're not exactly very, like, hugging, like, the French, you know, they kiss on the cheek and they're very, like, affectionate or whatever. Well, nursing and doctors, it's my job to assess your whole body, and it can be very uncomfortable. It can be private areas, and, you know, I'm barely meeting people for the first time, and I have to make sure that, you know, their dressings are okay and, you know, that things are going on okay in their body. So it was something for me coming because I used to work at Trader Joe's and I stocked cans on the shelf. Um, so it was very different. And I had to get used to not only me being comfortable doing that, but also helping my patients be comfortable. You know, that this is like this is part of my job and I'm here to help you. And I know it can be really embarrassing for them. And it's like, don't be embarrassed because I, you know, I, I care. And so I will say that 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 is definitely a different Thing about the medical field is you're very like invasive in some ways and sometimes um, I have to do things to people that hurts you know I have to start IVs I have to rub their bellies um, when they're bleeding after having a baby because that's how you stop the bleeding and they're screaming and they're crying and I feel awful but it I'm also saving their life so, you know, and I've had to do um, compressions on people and you can hear their ribs cracking. You know, I know I'm hurting them, but I'm also saving them. So it's 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 a fine line for sure. And you also have to have a bedside manner, of course. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the whole thing is, you know, how you compose yourself and you carry yourself. You can. I feel for me personally as a nurse, like you can make or break somebody's experience at the hospital. You can either make it, you know, a much more tolerable, relaxing time for them, or you can stress them out so bad that they're like terrified to go to the doctor, you know? So um, I really try to treat my patients like I would my family member or, you know, somebody that I love. Like even though I've never met them before, I just feel like everybody deserves to have that. You know, you deserve to feel that you are being cared for and, you know, that person has your best interest for you. Questions, final <laughs> comments? Yes. Okay, so I know she mentioned something about uh, having to deal with dead babies. Um, what, would, what, would, what would she do with them? Okay, so the question is, uh, you mentioned in delivery, sometimes an infant doesn't make it. Um, the question is, what do you do with the infant in that case? So it depends on what we call the gestation. So um, California, if it's under 20 weeks, it, it's considered medical waste. And um, they actually just dispose of it as they would of, you know, um, a placenta or an organ maybe that they took out. Um, as a parent, you have a right to bury your child and have a burial for your child. So at any gestation, at any age, you can say that. After 26, after 20 weeks, it becomes law. So then you would need to take their baby to the mortuary. And um, I mean, the, the hospital sets it up for you, but you would need to make decision for a burial and all that. So it just sort of depends where where it lies. And it can get it can get kind of tricky at 21 weeks, 20 weeks and four days or so. But there's another question. And, and it doesn't it doesn't survive so is it hard on you 
Uh, I, and I guess other nurses, but speak for yourself when you deliver a baby and it doesn't um, survive or thrive. It's awful. It's it's one of the most awful things I've ever had to see because um, not only is it, you know, those parents are losing their future, you know, it's just such a sad thing, especially the, a baby, you know, that they pass. And yeah, it... Um, it's really hard. I've gone to therapy for it. I highly suggest therapy for nurses. It's wonderful just to talk to somebody and not be judged and just say exactly what you need to say. But it, if you are going to go in the medical field, because I've had patients, elderly patients too, die with me. And, you know, it's hard. It's some somebody's leaving this world. It's, it's going to take a toll on you. Um, so I've had to learn how to process it and take it for what it is you know, this is the cycle of life and these things happen and really, you know, I have to move on and also help the parents move on because if you carry it with you all the time, like some people, some, I've known some nurses who've kept like shoes or kept clothing articles from things or, you know, they just hold on to it in their heart and it kind of, it really can um, take a huge toll on you for a long time. And yeah. there, so counseling for sure, definitely, or a family member or a coworker or somebody you can lean on to talk about those things because it is very, very sad. Is that provided in the nursing field where you have access to those resources? Mm, so yes and no. So it depends on the facility, but a lot of it is, um, a lot of it is you. You need to recognize that um, you need that and then you're, um, like the hospital has things that are there, but you have to step up and say, hey, I need this. You have to reach out for it. Yeah. And yeah. they do. And they do give, um, you know, even like time off or counseling or things like that. And a lot of hospitals will do like a debriefing after, you know, maybe a CPR or a really serious event and talk to everybody who was involved. And one cool thing that we do is we go over what happened, what went wrong, what went right, what can we do better next time, what can we do differently, and it's not a judgmental thing, it's just like how can we improve this process. So, um, you know, being humble and being open and knowing that, you know, I'm not perfect person, I'm going to make mistakes, but how can I improve is another really good model, like an, another good thing to have if you're going to go in the medical field. Because it's when people start feeling like, oh, I can do no wrong. I'm the best ever that, you know, stuff happens. And we have about a minute, but we haven't touched on this at all. Can you comment on anything regarding COVID during the last year and a half and being in the medical field? Uh, COVID is awful. <laughs> it's made our job 10 times harder. It's made, um, it's made patients more cranky. It's made them more sick. It's affected everybody's morale. The nurses are sad. The people are sad. Women are crying, you know, and depressed when they're pregnant because they're bringing a baby into all this stress. Um, it has just put a heavy weight on our fields for everybody. And um, especially just seeing, you know, young people pass away um, quickly from this has been really hard on us. Have you seen infants pass from um, COVID-related illnesses? I haven't seen an infant pass, but I don't. Work, I haven't worked in a hospital where they have like a critical COVID thing. Um, I think the youngest at the hospital that I worked uh, was, I think, somebody who was like in their twenties, which is still young. So I've had very sick moms, pregnant moms, who yeah. went to the ICU, and we were worried for them because we didn't know if the baby was going to make it or they were going to make it. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you um, in maternity um, patients who may have had COVID. So what happens is we watch their symptoms because it's a virus. We don't have a magic medication to fix it. Um, if the symptoms get too bad and the baby's suffering, then they would do an emergency C-section to get the baby out. If the baby's doing okay, but it's just the mom who's kind of suffering, they try to leave the baby in for as long as it can. So it's very, it's like a tightrope. You're really like going day by day, like what's going to happen with them. And at any point, if it seems like they're compromised or something's going to go south, then they would do emergency C-section. So. Can you guys run over in front of my camera and just say thank you? So she can, can you see ask you? her about burnout rate and if it's higher in her specialty? About what? Burnout, burnout rate. Burnout. Oh, they're asking about burnout. Burnout's huge. Um, that's where you need to recognize that, you know, if I need more support or if I need to take break, bye, <laughs> you know, or um, I need help, you got to step up and say it. Bye. Wow, there's a lot of you guys. <laughs> um, but it's huge. 
And it can, burnout can make you hate your job. It can make you not want to even step foot in the hospital. And that's not a place that you want to be as a nurse. You know, bye. <laughs> I hope you guys learned something. Is but burnout, burnout is huge. Your... And that can go for any job. And that's where I say, move on, change it, something. Is burnout higher in your specialty? In nursing, I think so. Because it's physically and emotionally demanding. What did you ask her? Uh, I asked her if it was, um, if it was higher, like the the risk of burnout was higher. Oh, in in labor and delivery. Yeah. Oh, so he's saying is burnout, is burnout more prevalent in labor and delivery, or would there so be? So I would say I would say no, because we don't have a um, as high of COVID. I right now the burnout is in telemetry and ICU nurses because they they are in the thick of it and they're dealing with it every single day. And the amount of people who are dying, it, it takes, you know, if you're going, like, it used to be you'd go to work and maybe somebody would die once a month. I know that sounds awful, but, like, you know, just once a month. Now we're, you're probably seeing, like, two to three, maybe four people dying a week, you know. So it's it's hard. Yeah. Question, anything else? No, that was it. Thank you, Nina, so much. Thank I you. truly appreciate you Yeah, being no here. problem. I'm glad you guys were interested. They were very interested. It was awesome. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. I can talk about how. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. <laughs>